Closed captioning provided by Duca Financial Services Credit Union. Discover more affordable banking at duca.com. Welcome back. Listen Up has been looking at the historic change facing Egypt. And to help us understand what is underway, we are joined by Dr. Wafiq Waba of Tyndale University. He specializes in Middle East, Islamic, and Christian studies. He's an Egyptian Canadian. He is taught in Cairo and North America. Welcome to Listen Up, Dr. Waba. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Okay, images, pictures, the whole emotions of what you've seen. What has stood out to you as you think about this historic change? Um, mixed feelings, uh, sense of joy of what happened, what took place. Finally, a country is liberated after uh, decades of oppression, uh, police brutality, and uh, silencing all the oppositions. But also a sense of sadness of uh, those who have been killed, those who have paid a very heavy price for uh, that to happen. I was struck by how deep, uh, deeply religious the people were through all of this. Everywhere, Facebook, everything, yeah. it's all about pray, pray, pray on all yeah. of the different traditions. Tell me what role that plays for everywhere from on the street right up into the vice president's office as he right. made the announcement of right. Mr. Mubarak stepping down. Right. Uh, again, uh, religion is very part of the religion of the, of the social life of the Egyptians. It is in the DNA of uh, of everything, and it is it, it gives them a, a source of hope. It gives them uh, a way to cope up with uh, the pressures that they live with, but but it gives them that sense of belonging to this land. It, it has been through the history. Egyptians are very much uh, attached to their religion, whether they are Muslim. More Christian. Okay, let's talk about a very specific power that was being leaned on. The church in Tahrir Square, the Christian church, had for six years been doing in an orchestrated, organized way praying yeah. for this kind of change. Tell me the specifics. What was going on? This is something actually very unique. Uh, Christians are minority in Egypt, and uh, usually 12 these million. Uh, 12 million out of 80 million. But they always uh, lived with a sense that they are the minority. Their voice will never be heard. Uh, they are oppressed. I mean, the, the, the whole society is oppressed, but they are more so. Uh, but something happened in the last few years. Uh, Christians start to pray for the country, they start to pray for a change in the country, they start to pray for or got to use them in the country for the benefit of the country, which is against all the odds. Uh, many of them, of course, immigrated, many of them left, but uh, those who are there, they have that sense of responsibility, which is very unusual. Uh, th there is always a say in Egypt that uh, buses, uh, uh, belongings, all belong to the government, so nobody care. Nobody care about the streets, nobody care about government buildings, but th th there is a, a new sense of, uh, of belonging, a new sense of pride that is taking place now, and for the first time, you see images and, of people cleaning streets. And this happened? church was part of that as they yes. were working with the mosque in yes. unprecedented. Yes. But was this an organized and deliberate thing over the last six years? It is. It is. It is an organized deliberate thing. No, it, it no. was. We're uh, going to focus yes. prayer effort yes. for our country. Yes. Yes. New Year's Eve, 23 Christians were killed in a horrific bombing in Alexandria, and it did kind of wake the whole region up yes. to what is going on here. Um, tell us, are we seeing new days of cooperation when you see the kind of pictures you pulled to us from your family Facebook right. of this cooperation? I this think is we Muslim are. Muslim Christian yeah. arm in arm, yes. less than six weeks after a bombing. I, I, now, we, you have to put this into context, too. The, the bombing in Alexandria was the tip of the iceberg, as we have seen in the last several years, several bombings, several destruction to churches, to Christians, to their businesses, kidnapping, uh, kidnapping young girls. It, 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 people are fed up with that. And unfortunately, now as the news starts to surface in the last few days, it looks like also the previous government has some rule in that. In, in a way, even if they didn't uh, intentionally plan it, they didn't stop it. Okay. So uh, people are fed up with that, both Christian and Muslims. They don't like to see their country destroyed. And I think all of a sudden, after what happened in Alexandria, before the revolution, Christian and Muslims start getting together, and Muslims actually went to churches to apologize for what happened and start protecting Christians. So what we have seen in Tahrir Square is, is again, a new model of cooperation, of unity between the Christian and Muslims. For the first time, they start putting their hands together to protect the country from the destruction that has been going on. Actually, one of your relatives, a, a priest here, arm in arm with a... Imams from, uh, yes. 
Uh, is this going to continue, this kind of harmony? I, I pray and hope it will continue. Well, right now they have a common uh, target, which is the government, which is achieved. Uh, I hope that that will continue. And, Regardless uh, whether we are Christian, Muslim, whatever faith we are, we have a great capacity to be corrupt, to be greedy, to let power corrupt. Yeah. What is your advice from a Christian perspective? What does your theology say yeah. we do with this potential? You are absolutely right. I mean, the human nature is a sinful nature and we have to continue to have a balance check on that. There, there has to be, I, I believe it is the power of prayer that usually protect people and countries and places. But I also believe that there has to be a system in place where people should be accountable. Uh, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we, we have to be careful not to repeat the pattern that happened in Egypt and in other places around the Middle East and other parts of the world. Where dictatorship took over, there's no balance. They can just take, uh, they can take control of everything. I, I, I think we have a responsibility to do justice and to love mercy, and it has to be in practical ways. Dr. Waba, through all the cultural conflicts of your career, you have persisted in being a follower of Jesus. You've seen people suffer for it. Why have you persisted in following Jesus? For me, uh, Christ gives me hope. He is the source of my peace. Uh, he forgives my sin. So uh, I'm able to forgive others. I'm able to uh, embrace others, and I'm able to live in peace with others. So he's my savior and uh, he's the one who gives me hope to live for. Dr. Wafiq Waba, thank you very much. Thank you. When we return, a short little prayer for when the world all around you is changing. That's next in The Wrap. <laughs>